it's Greg here with another Vim screencast and I'm going to continue talking about settings. Now settings are a great way to spend your Friday night or your Saturday just tweaking them. Um, it's, it's deeply rewarding if you're a geek um, and I like to compare it to what for my parents generation was you know waxing their car. You know, we, we can tweak our dot files and I'm just going to get into it. Uh, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so we can really see what's going on here. Um, some of these are pretty self-explanatory, so I'm going to go pretty fast. Uh, set auto indent is fairly obviously something that maintains the indent of the current line uh, when you hit return. That's cool. This is a hidden little gem, backspace. For some reason that I don't understand, the behavior of the backspace key is severely restricted, uh, probably because that's the way it was in VI. Um, unless you use this setting here to allow backspace to backspace over more things. Um, so specifically, uh, you'll see here, if for example, I enter insert mode in the middle of the line and type foo and then backspace, without this setting, I wouldn't actually be able to continue backspacing, um, which is of course maddeningly, maddening. Um, not that you should be doing a lot of backspacing, you should probably be using like a Vim motion, but still, uh, it's something that feels like an arbitrary restriction. Um, so I highly recommend that you check out the backspace setting and all of these of course are documented in the help. Um, always in quotes. So you'll notice there when I search for backspace, um, there is actually another backspace, uh, which in this case is referring to the key. So if you ever want to find a setting, always remember to search for it with quotes. Um, so that is backspace. Let's move on to the whole question of backups. Now I sometimes see people recommending that you turn off backups because they're annoying and they get in the way. Um, I think that's kind of pointless they don't have to annoy at all. Um, and there are two ways that you can make them not annoy. Uh, one is what we see down here on these lines where we tell Vim to put its back, backup files out of the way somewhere, which you can do with a backup dir setting. Um, and of course, my use of plus equals here on these lines means that I'm appending to the setting. I um, mean, in this way I can break it up with multiple lines to make it more readable. But basically it's gonna use the first writable location that it finds in this list. Um, and only as a last resort, use the current directory, which is the dot there, um, which basically means I never have to see these things and they never get in my way. Um, the one time that they might get in my way is if I happen to edit a file as root, and thus I get a root owned file. And then if I were to later try to edit the file again, not as root, then Vim won't be able to write to that file anymore because it won't have the privileges to do so. So that's why we use this if exists, oops, this if exists uh, check up here on line six to make sure that we don't actually create backups if we are running as the root user. Um, and in this case, another use of exists, uh, this time we get an environment variable. Um, so basically we don't write backups uh, if we're a root user. Um, and there are similar tricks that we can do for undo files and swap files. And we'll get to those when we get further down the file. Or actually, I might actually just look at them now. So here's the swap file stuff. Uh, if you're the root user, don't create a swap file. Otherwise, it's actually the probably misleadingly named directory option that we use to keep the swap files out of the way in a location where we won't have to look at them. Um, and once again, we use the plus equals trick to append to the list and build it up. There are some tricky semantics here around the equals equals, not equals equals, the slash slash at the end there that you can see. Uh, if I remember correctly, uh, what that means is that it should create a file name that represents the path components by replacing the path component with some special character. Maybe, maybe this will tell us what I was looking for. There you go. If a directory ends with two path separators, the swap will be built from the complete path. So this basically means that you're less likely to have collisions. Because if you eat two, if you edit two files called bar, uh, and one of them is in foo and one of them is in baz, uh, then you'll actually get foo bar and baz bar, and they won't collide, uh, which is nice. Um, so there's that one, and then there's the undo. Duh. So this is the last one of that triumvirate of places where Vim is going to write files that you don't want to collide. Same trick. If you're the root user, don't create undo files at all. Otherwise, same deal. Build up this set of places it's going to look for uh, using the current directory only as a last resort and finally just turn on undo files. Um, so those are the three ones that are related to 
creating files automatically. I never see swap files, backup files, or undo files, and I, they never bother me. So there's simply no reason not to turn them off if you set them up correctly. Um, so that's all I'm going to talk about in this little episode. I'll be back in a while with more about settings.